a little before my time, 1912, and she died December 16th, 2004. She had a good long life. She was born in Canada, and she moved to the United States in 1931 to pursue higher education. She became a U.S. citizen in 1950. I am going to retrieve our slideshow. Oops, nope. No. I'm not sure how I've done this in the past. Nope. I made your need your assistance this morning. Yeah, I know where that is, but uh -huh. I think I know what to do. Here we go. Sorry about that, folks. A little bit of brain fog this morning. Or I should say a little bit more than usual. Here we go. She called herself an abstract expressionist because she believed that her work expressed emotion, but she was labeled a minimalist because her work became more and more pared down and simplified as she progressed in her career. So her, her Pictures are characterized by very quiet, serene compositions, and you will see this more and more as we go through the slideshow. Usually they are formatted in grids, and they were pr predominantly very monochromatic in shades of black, white, and brown. This picture is one of her early works. She was inspired by nature, she lived for several years in New York City, but then moved west. She loved Taos, New Mexico and the desert. Often you will see images that will remind you of rockscapes and mountain landscapes. They were a big inspiration for her. This one to me looks particularly rocky and mountainous, and it's fairly typical of the colors that she enjoyed using. Her work often, she felt, conveyed a certain tranquility and spirituality. She was um, a person who suffered from mental illness. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia during her early years. Um, when she lived in New York City, she submitted herself to electric shock therapy. She was quite desperate to try and overcome her illness, and she thought that the shock therapy might help her. She had um, audio hallucinations, so she heard voices was one of the symptoms that she suffered from, from her illness. She had over 85 solo shows and participated in many exhibitions, including the Venice Biennale and the Documenta in Europe. She earned the National Medal of Arts from the National Endowment from the Arts in 1998, and she was elected to the Royal Canadian Academy of Arts in 2004. This is very typical of her early works where the shapes are very much attuned with nature. I see in this many different things. You probably do too. They are not realistic, but you certainly can read into these shapes different things. I see bird-like shapes. What, what do folks hear? 
see, or folks at home, you can just call out. Stir up like you'd mount a horse. Yeah, that black shape, right, Margo? It looks kind right. of like a stirrup. To Maybe me, it's it kind good. of looks like a bird, too. Hmm. Could be. The white part being the head, the black part being the body. And what's the white part at the bottom? <laughs> I don't know. That to me doesn't even feel like it's attached to the bird shape. I hear you. Eileen, you were saying something I didn't hear you. Okay, that white shape or the bay shape. the bay shape in the middle, which I see as a negative shape. You see it as kind of a fish. Yeah. I see it as a human head with Kind of a cutout where that might be a brain shape. I think of it as a parking meter. <laughs> a parking meter. Okay. It is definitely abstract. These shapes are not real at all. So despite her personal struggles, Martin was dedicated to her art. And certainly her work today inspires many, many people. Many, many artists today continue to be inspired by her work. So she received her BA from Bellingham, from, sorry, Washington University, Western Washington University College of Education in Bellingham, Washington in 1942. Oh, sorry, no, in 1942, she received her BA from Teachers College at Columbia University. And in 1950, she studied at Western Washington University College of Education in Bellingham, Washington. And while living in New York, Martin became interested in modern art and was exposed to artists such as Arshiel Gorky. Now, Gorky was a Russian artist who moved to New York City, and her work looks very much like Gorky, G-O-R-K-Y. And I encourage you to look at his work if you like hers. She also was inspired by artists such as Adolf Gottlieb and Joanne Miro. She took many studio classes at Teachers College at Columbia University, she attended the Summerfield School of the University of New Mexico in Taos, New Mexico. And it was there that she became interested in Zen Buddhism. She was very much inspired by the teachings of the Buddhist scholar D.T. Suzuki at Columbia. And she became interested in Asian studies not as a religious discipline, but as a code of ethics. She used it as a practical how-to for getting through life. She used it as her guidebook for how to live properly. The practice of Zen Buddhism. She also taught courses at the University of New Mexico. She took classes and taught courses at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque and then returned to Columbia University where she earned an MA, a Master's of Art in Modern Art. In 1957, she moved to a loft in Coenty Slip in Lower Manhattan. That was a period of time in New York City where there were many, many artists living together in loft spaces in New York City. So it was a very rich period when many artists were experimenting in abstract expressionism. It was also a place where gay artists congregated together and felt that they had a lot of freedom because it was a period of time when homosexual people were not in favor. So it was actually illegal to be gay in the United States of America. And people felt a lot of freedom 
in this particular neighborhood in New York City. Martin herself was homosexual, although she lived her entire li life closeted and never came out as a gay person, uh, unfortunately. She frequently wrote about uh, feminism, although she never qualified herself as a feminist, which I think is really interesting. So this work is now getting more and more simplified, very spare. Her imagery is getting very, very cut back and, and bare bones, I guess you could say. There's very little in this picture. And that was her goal. She wanted to make her work as simplified as possible because she thought that color and line and shape had a power and emotion of its own. And she thought the viewer, the person looking at her work was more important than the artist. And she wanted the power of the color itself, the pure expressive quality of color to convey the emotion all by itself. So she felt that her input was less important than our feelings. She was not lazy because she was a very prolific artist. So Daniel, I have to disagree with you on this one. She painted constantly. And she would do many layers that she would scrape off and then another layer that she would scrape off. So she was a bit of a perfectionist. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would not classify her as a perfectionist. <gasps> She left New York City abruptly in 1967. Oh, let me backtrack a minute, please. So she was publicly known to have schizophrenia. As I mentioned before, she even opted for electric shock therapy at Bellevue Hospital. And she did have support from her friends in Coenta Slip, who came together after one of her episodes to enlist help from a respected psychiatrist who was also an art collector and a friend to the community. But for the most part, her struggle with mental illness was a private individual one. And the full effect of how sick she really was, was kept private from the larger public. And in 1967, she left and left New York City and completely disappeared from the art world and moved to the Midwest. She started driving around the country and she stopped producing art for several years. She rented a 50 acre property and lived a very simple life in an adobe home that she built herself. Um, and then in 71, she was approached by a curator who was interested in organizing a solo show with her. She started to write and lecture at various universities and her interest in painting slowly began to redevelop. She then um, saved up some money. She was able to own her own property. She moved to Galistio, New Mexico, and she lived there till 1993. And she had a very austere lifestyle. She lived completely alone. And she then became more active in the art world and traveled extensively, showing in Canada and the United States extensively. What is it about New Mexico? That you I don't know, because <laughs> many American artists have ended up in New Mexico. The landscape really attracts artists. I've been there, I love it. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. 
Here's a wonderful quote from Agnes Martin in an interview with her in 1989. She said, I quote, beauty and perfection are the same. They never occur without happiness. Beauty and perfection are the same. They never occur without happiness. Um, Laura E is waiting to be admitted, if you wouldn't mind. I personally love this one. I think it's wonderful. So this is still one of her early works, though. In 1973, she, she returned to art. She consciously distanced herself from the social aspects of the art world. Never went to openings. Very muted palette, very simple shapes. I think absolutely dynamic composition. This one's very different, yes. These are still early works. They're early works because you can see there is form and there is some biomorphic form, some human animalistic shape. But you're going to see in the later works that she even lets that go. She loved Mark Rothko, another abstract expressionist painter, because, quote, this is a quote from Martin, he reached zero so that nothing could stand in the way of truth, end quote. She followed Martin's example by paring down to the most reductive elements to encourage a perception of perfection and to emphasize transcendent reality. I think that's a lot of words to say. She wanted to reduce her paintings to being as simple as possible so that they expressed emotion, so that they rose above reality and expressed pure emotion. Okay, so this is the kind of work that made Agnes Martin famous. Yes, she is very famous for her grid paintings. Heather, I want to hear your opinion, because I know already. No. I understand her thought process. Okay. <clears throat> Aesthetically, it doesn't do it. Okay. But, but the blue actually is more uh, interesting than her the white beige and because I think that Evokes an emotion while the other. Okay. So she is famous for these grid compositions, but she's most famous for her white on white compositions, which Heather is alluding to, and they don't move you. No. So Heather's not crazy about Agnes Martin. Yeah. What's interesting Robin. Is that makes the background. I'm drawn more into the background with various views and the shapes behind the grid. Then the actual grid. The actual okay. Grid. I see what's going on back there. I don't particularly care for squares and, you know, repetition like that. But that's what the grid part. But there's something else going on that seems very interesting. Okay. Yes, Daniel, I want to hear your opinion in one second, but I want to add something really interesting. Mm -hmm. She's classified as a minimalist painter. The minimalist art movement in New York City was a, a very intellectual movement of artists that removed emotion from art. It was about making things very mechanical 
and not showing emotion at all. So Marta never wanted to be classified as a minimalist because she wanted to show emotion. And Robin is getting feeling from this painting. So she always called herself an abstract expressionist. She did not use rulers. When she created her grids, the horizontal and vertical lines, when she did her dots, she used nothing but her own hand. So these lines appear to be incredibly straight, maybe even done by a computer, but no, she did all of this freehand on her own. Mm -hmm. So she claimed she was an abstract painter, not a minimalist. Daniel. Go ahead. Yeah, I was also kind of kind of grasping or finding that example. Mostly because sometimes the problem sometimes is that with modern, these kind of modern art is that it's so minimalistic that there's it, it's almost nothing. It makes it makes other people who have effort on art kind of look at the edge, kind of feel like their effort are wasted and just people. Are, how can I say these modern artists when they show something so minimalistic, it's so effortless and so and okay that so is that it's nothing finish. it's just so it's so pretentious okay i hear you and i respect your opinion i know I'm being, but i would invite i would invite you to to think about the fact that it may not be effortless what appears to be effortless may not be so effortless okay. and today when you try the project today, if you choose to try it, I want you to think about whether it's hard or easy. Okay. I, mean, I, mean, it's like, I, I don't know if you, if you, there is a painting that it's just the color blue and, and that's it. And right. that, and, and then there's someone who just put a banana on, 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 a, na on, on yes. a nail and they call it art. And that just, how can I say, it, it's kind of in, it, insulting in a way. In, in a way. Right. I hear you. And I have a problem with the banana artist too, but we're not talking about him today. Laura, <laughs> let, let's let Laura speak. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, yes. I... I don't, I would hesitate to judge her art through the lens of her illness, though. Because there are many people with mental challenges who create extraordinary art. So let's think about Van Gogh. Well, no, you mentioned the word effortless. So you don't oh, know what's not right. the process. You right. Know, to get to that point that oh. you can make it without a ruler. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we're going to move on. Everybody's entitled to a different opinion, but I want us to get to our own work today. Uh, we're not entitled. We're going to move on, Daniel. So she created six by six foot paintings. So these are quite large. And they were dense paintings, usually done with graphite grids. Yes, Nicole. Nicola. Graphite. This is one of the type that Heather is referring to. They were often in this beige color. Did she do those by hand too? This is all done by hand. It does almost look as if it's woven. I like the earlier ones better. <laughs> yes. Yes, I heard you, E, but Heather is finishing up her statement. So Heather is saying it does not appear to be effortless because it seems to almost be woven. And E, you like the blue one better. Okay. 
I'm going to move through these quickly now because we are, it's getting late. So she loves the grid. She loves dots. I personally love this painting. That's a little scary to me. What, Robin? That's a little scary to me. Scary. It's like, it's like a screen, and when you find it, you, you can't get out. That's just what comes up. As you see. Okay. The, the woven and the gold, incredible. Mm -hmm. That is so inviting. This looks to me like So like a jail cell kind of thing. Okay, so Robin is finding this a little scary. This has millions of dots. <laughs> now, again, when you look behind it, you see something. Yes, there's a lot going on in this one. So there's the grid, there's there's dots, and then there's the background. So Esty's finding this one beautiful. It's a rug. As a rug, you would love this one. It does have a woven quality to it. But it is paint, right? It's paint, yes. Can I take one of the earlier ones, like the first one, before you sign off? Um, okay, I'm not sure we are where we are in the slideshow, but I'll go back at the end. How's that, Margo? That sounds great. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so that is the end. Um, you want to see very early, like this one? Yes, perfect. Can you make it bigger or not? I'll, I'll make it bigger. Okay. I can put it up on the screen, full screen. That's, that's okay, I just want to take a picture. I'm good. <laughs> Let's see if I hit play. There we go. So her early works are different than her later works. This often happens with artists. Their work evolves as they learn and grow. And I'm delighted that her work caused controversy and a lot of discussion. That's terrific. She used color washes of diluted acrylic paint, often blended with something called gesso. Gesso is a compound that's used to cover canvas, raw canvas, to make it a nice smooth surface to paint on. We've never used gesso in this class. It's very messy. So the lines which encompass the painting were not measured by a ruler, but intuitively marked by the artist. All right, any other thoughts or questions about Martin before we move on? No, okay. So some of you did not like her at all, but I hope you're gonna like the project for today. And it is inspired by her work. I don't know where my mouse is gone. Darn. I don't want to upgrade my toolbar. Let's see if I can escape. Okay. Give me a minute, everyone. I seem to have lost my mouse. Yeah. I wish I could lose the mice in my house. Yes. Looks like it's at the bottom, Liz. Yeah, but it's not enabled. I'm not able to use it. All right, let me. I've hit escape, it's not doing anything. Or right click? How do you right click with the touch pad? Command and click. Did you, you click command and click together? It's equivalent to. 
Yeah, but now I'm. it says leave meeting. I don't want to do that. See? Thank you, Laura is here to help. I had this one talking last week. You gotta schedule it, right? No, I don't want to play. Maybe if you just go to the end of the slideshow. Ah. So now, but how do you stop share? Is what I really want to do. <clears throat> Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we're cooking with gas yeah. now. Laura, I'd like to set up for the demo. Okay, so Laura is now going to set us up. So I can do a quick demo. Folks, please mute. Don't forget to mute. And Laura's going to set us up so that I can do a quick demo. I'm Maybe it's back here that we have. Yeah, that's what it is. So we'll solve the problem. I'll just stand here and smile. Okay, so feedback problem seems to be better. Laura is setting up for me to do a demonstration. Our, no, it's still feedback. Mm -hmm. please. Apologies, everyone. I'm going to go get the materials for the demonstration. Our goal today is to create our own abstract expressions painting. I'll be right back. Yes, folks, here there's um, acrylic paints, there's watercolor paints, there's drawing equipment. I encourage you today to use paint. There's paper. So you can start the video. This here. I just got a I did not bring the water for you. You are correct. If your little jars of paint do not have enough paint in them, I have larger jars to refill from. But let me know, okay? Last time people started pouring directly onto the paper from the large jars. I want to avoid that. Okay. 
treated me only because I had a team class this afternoon and I need paint for them too. I don't know Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. That All right, so here is how you can do an abstract painting in the style of the Agnes Martin. I am going to use a ruler, so I don't know, you may think that's cheating. If you don't want to use a ruler, obviously you don't have to. But to create a grid, start with the frame. Now, she did say perfection brings happiness and beauty. I kind of disagree with that, but we won't go there. Daniel, what do you think about that quote? Mm, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of perfection. Oh, I'll tell you why I prefer it to her. Okay. Because her mind is probably all over the place, yes. and for her, there's order and it serves. a sense of peace. Okay. Mind. I understand Okay. For some people, perfection is a way to achieve order and happiness. Okay. What do you think about her connection to Zen Buddhism? Maybe it has something to do with her rules for living. No. No. Zen Buddhism is more about finding a balance, not perfection. Once again, she's not here. <laughs> so we will never know. Anyway, you can create your own grid. And I'm doing it with pencil. You don't have to do it in pencil first. You could do it with Sharpie. You could do it with oil pastel. That would be a great way to do it, actually. You can start with pencil and then go over it and make it darker with oil pastel. But to make a grid, you do vertical lines crisscross with horizontal lines. Mine is already not perfect because I didn't measure. If you want perfection, what should I have done to make my grid perfect? What should I have done? What you said? Straight edge. I am. No. You can measure the dimensions of the outside frame. 
the inches of you the can do it mathematically. If you measure the dimensions of the outside frame, right. then you can figure out the dimensions of each box. I didn't do that. You could. If you're into perfection, you could do that. The class is teaching you how the rest of the perfection. Once you have your grid, the next step is to create your dots. Now, she stayed within a very small palette of colors, right? She did blue with blue, brown with brown, gray with gray. So you need to decide first what color of family you're going to use. Do you want to do blue greens maybe? Or violets? Do you want a red violet palette or a blue violet palette or red orange or yellow and red family? So think about that first. Or do you want maybe you want light blues? And in this particular kind of painting, I would start small with the small dots in the middle and then do the behind spaces, the background spaces in the box second. Usually I would tell you to fill the whole square first and then do the dots on top. That's not the way she worked. She would do the small dots in the middle first. And you decide what size you want them to be. And then just have fun. While you're doing the dots, start thinking about what colors you're going to use behind them. Is it going to be the same color throughout? Are you going to vary the colors by mixing? What kind of emotion are you going to convey? So while you're doing the dots, think about these two things. Colors, feelings. What do colors do for you? Does blue make you feel sad? Does red make you feel energetic or angry or explosive? Think about what kind of power color has over you. Those were the things she was constantly thinking about. I asked the question, but you started out with blue. Mm -hmm. Are you in? Yeah, so I'm with this painting, if I'm doing it in the style of Agnes Martin, I would probably stay within the blue family. Oops, I didn't wash my brush very well. So whoever uses the ointment, there's blue in it, I apologize. Try and keep these colors pure, okay? For my background, I'm going to stay within the blue chamber. I'm kind of regretting that I didn't do, didn't go over my pencil lines with the darker color first. I would recommend that you do that first, okay? Can't help but get me a, like a dark oil pastel black over. Put this one over there. So here's an option. You can go over your lines like this first. Do it before you paint, though, because now I'm going to get paint on the ruler. Or you could not do pencil lines. You could do it first with the oil pastel. The grid is definitely important in her picture. She makes sure the grid is showing. So you might want to do this first before you start using your paint. Understand? 
Or you can paint the grid afterwards. You can do the same thing with watercolor paint. She used watercolor frequently, sometimes acrylic, sometimes watercolor. You could do this with watercolor paint. Same, same idea. If you do not like the grid, idea, you could do the more organic shape kind of abstract painting that she did in her early works. With watercolor, obviously you don't have white paint, but you could use water. Somebody didn't wash this brush. Watercolor. All right, folks at home, I, if you have any questions, please either in the chat or yell out. Um, SC over here is using black and white. You can do that. If you don't like the muted palette, if you want to go wild with color, you can do that too. Agnes Martin is our inspiration, but as always, if you want to go your own way, do it. We're here to have fun and relax and enjoy. Go for it. I'm going to put that picture up for you to look at. Yeah, I'm just, my question is, how does she do, when does she paint the background? She does the background second. She grid first, or she does it third. Grid first, dot second, background third. Last. The background is always last in her process. The background regular? Yeah, around the dot is what I call the background. But she had darker. She had darker. Good luck. I'm going to put it up, and then you can ask me the questions while you're looking at it, okay? Because seeing is believing, and you're doubting me, so I want you to see it. It's beautiful. How it's going? Oh, yeah. 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 So we're ready to go back to the. You stopped the sharing, um, Laura. All right, I'm going to put the blue dot picture up for everyone to look at. And apologies, I don't know why we had that technical difficulty. It's the same one we had last week, so maybe I have to practice at home, everybody. I don't know what happened. Now that's lazy art band. Good yeah. joke, but it's lazy art. I know. I'm just, I'm just making fun of it. I know. I get it. Here's the other thing too. I this is a memory I share frequently. I took my students on a class trip to the Museum of Modern Art, and it was a group of sixth graders. Unfortunately, this image is really digitized. Um, let me tell the story first, and then we'll talk about this picture. And one of my smartest kids in the class, it was a sixth grade class, it was a boy, and he, we were with a docent and she was answering questions about artwork and we 
We're right in front of a very famous painting called Broadway Boogie Woogie by Mondrian, one of the more famous paintings that the Museum of Modern Art owned. And it's just squares in the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue with black outlines. And this child shoots his hand up and of course, the docent, the guide calls on him immediately. And he goes, yeah, I don't get it. My, my baby brother could do that. And she looked him straight in the eye and said, but he didn't. <laughs> the point being, it is great art because someone created it and thought of it and no one ever did it before. Yeah. It is earth shattering, mind blowing, groundbreaking, never for, before thought of creativity. And maybe we don't understand it, but it means something to someone. And therefore, we have to consider it and think about it. And it's that enigmatic quality that for some people, maybe not you and I, Daniel, but for some people, makes it qualified. I feel like, I'm sorry, I, was, I feel like I was coming over with a Parker combat or that, uh, but if I said it, it's going to it, it's gonna open a big can of worms. I love it when you make your opinions known. Uh, you're not offending me. Oh, uh, what did you do? Oh, with this brush. Wow. This is a perfect rib. Well, well, I borrowed from you. I yeah, well, but it's, it's a perfect rib. It's better. Well, I, 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 okay, so. She was, she was dark blue in the back. She did that last. Before, before she did this. The dots came before the dark blue. But, but there's two shades in the dark blue. Yeah, so dark blue and light blue. She this I'm guessing this was either very thin down acrylic or watercolor paint. So sometimes it came out darker than others. She was mixing it. It did not come straight to the bottom. It might have been intentional. Maybe she wanted it darker in some places than others. Okay. There's two, two shades of white, right? Yes. Yes. And I want to tell you this. When you stand in front of her painting, there is a luminescent spiritual, I don't want to say emanation, because that gives it, that gives it, more of a power than it has. But there's a strong, for me, a very strong feeling that I get from <laughs> looking at her work. And say, it, say it again, what you just said. And it moves me. Okay, you, you said when you said I don't remember. <laughs> you said illumination, that's one word you use. Yeah, it's luminescent. It, it glows. Okay. I feel her work has a, a glowing glow. And I like it. That doesn't mean you have to. I remember being close up to the screen. All I'm doing, I'm trying to expose folks to different kinds of art. You either like it or you don't, and that's okay. Yeah, just don't hurt your eyes. I know, but I, 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 I don't have very good vision. Just don't make it work. <laughs> what, my vision or my paint? Your vision. <laughs> you know, I started to do the ones that were a lot more complicated. So I just did one. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just got them. Okay. I'm thinking if you're iridescent and you want to. they're iridescent. Just observe. And that's uh, mine. I'm sorry, I just wanted to go to the person who did that big. Yeah, I wish it was me in large, but it's watercolor paper, so that's yeah. I did not bring the watercolor paper. Okay, you have to be Yeah, before it's all right. Yeah, I understand.
That's because it's digitized. This is pixels now. You're looking at a photograph that's been pixelated. They are circles. The original is dots, yeah. You know, maybe that's probably one of the reasons I have a little bit of an apathy in seeing it like that. Uh, sometimes when once you get a painting a picture is not exactly the same as what you read. I agree with you. All yeah. right. So Look on your phone and, and see if you can find a picture. Probably, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah, and well it's digitized on here too. Here, let me see if I can find. Um, you may not be able to find that exact one. Is that the one on the left? Well, it's similar. And it's amazing the variety in her work. You would think you've seen one Agnes Martin, you've seen them all, but. It's all right, Liz. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Okay, don't worry. It's okay. Yeah, when you go, the problem is when you go on the internet, they're just going to take you to places where you can buy her work. Um, here. I think this is the actual painting that's so larger. Stephanie, I replied to your uh, chat. Let me know if you need anything. I will come back in a moment and look at the chat. Coming up with something different. I love it, love it, love it. Mm -hmm.
going to put the lids back on the jars. Just screw them on enough so that they're easy to reopen. Because I'm <laughs> using them like my teenagers to say. I will try and remember to alert them not to pick them up. Oh, you've got that class again, for me. Yeah. What is today? Today is Wednesday. No, I mean the. Oh, a woman named Sonia Delane. Oh. Another abstract. <laughs> Come. You want I that have a marking. Oh. That's for the, the kids that are uh, in school, right? Today. They in the no, they still have school. But I mean, we have an after school class. Yes. From yes. 3 30 to a quarter to six. Right. There are. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, but I just keep going. Uh -huh. Yes. It's very uh -huh. hard. Is this a class for teaching or a class for oh. music? Oh, okay. What school? Mm -hmm. We've been trying to get a workshop for him at a school in Humble for like a million years. He never seems to have a workshop. He's like a Yeah. Yeah. We almost, we almost got into the charter school. That fell apart for some reason. We almost got into the Stephen's cooperative that fell apart. There's That's always at the last minute something happened. I went to Stephen's and I thought it was all fixed and ready to go, and then boom, it never happened. It wasn't child care. Not that was just so. She worked really hard. We all worked really hard to make it happen, and then something fell through. I can always try again. There's always a People forget. <laughs> Fortunately, different people is always it's still the same same system. I'm sorry, Daniel. I'll be Sometimes right back. It, people may change, but the system is still the same. One second. This is not sending. Oh, she left already. Okay. I'm coming, Daniel. Uh, people may change, but so the system is still the same. That's true. It's also just a one more thing. Really? 
libraries, we have no problem doing workshops for the schools. In Jersey City, we've done many workshops in the schools. Well, welcome to the Spinner Challenge. Nora has told me that the wild school has done many workshops mm -hmm. in public schools in New York. Could it be because it's a small town? Doing brilliant today. Folks at home, are we copacetic? You good? Everybody's good? No comment? Yep. yep. Okay, good.
going to be a problem. Street. Uh, and the big store is 
art supplies, everything. And they say they moved to a smaller store. Not great. Not any things. I remember you talking yeah. about it. Now it's just her 24 days of size, and they don't have anything in it. That was the point blue and pink. Oh, the third thing for aging, hearing aids, exercise, social engage. Yes. Those are the <laughs> three. Got it. I remember. Yes, that's very important. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while, but I <laughs> That's a true. Listen, memory is not the worst thing to do. That memory, memory is not the worst thing to lose. I mean, some kind of memory. Name it. It is for some people. Yeah. The worst thing to lose. Well, memory of your the people you know. Yeah. Before I go, I think one of the things. Um, um, <coughs> She's in a facility. But she doesn't want to lose a lot of time. She wants to stay with the shopping. I know. I know. She wants to stay with the shopping. I know. I know. I should have said that, forgive me. Now too late, but you could change from dots. It doesn't necessarily have to be dots. <laughs> no, you could change those dots into well, different I'm shapes. Three dimensions. Why not my dots are three dimensions? I am seeing it from here. I'm loving it. Why not add texture? I love texture. <laughs> I know. You could do triangles, you could do little squares. <laughs> she happened to love <laughs> excuse me. She happened to love dots. Well, your color choices. Where did you put them white? I can get it. No. I, I'm in control. No, I have this team place. I understand. I mean I have a huge gallon. Thank 
Or a water bottle. Or water bottle. <laughs> that was a conspiracy. Yeah. Oh, I should have mentioned. Um, went to see a show in Washington, D.C. It's worth the trip, everybody. An artist named Simone Lee at the Hirshhorn Gallery. It is a must-see show. Alongside the artist, Mark Bradford. Just the pencil show. If you want to darken the grid, you want to do it all mm -hmm. over. It's just so many people. I feel like this is finished. You want to do a smaller one? What time is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, mine's simple. Oh my gosh, the Supreme Court's been busy so long. Thank you. 
First time ever painted. In her life. <laughs> in my life. <laughs> This was great. I don't like this at all, but it doesn't want to feel so much. It doesn't feel So it's a sketch. It's a sketch. It's a sketch. And then you see the balance of the And then this was not my bad. It's just something to check. Yeah. But it is really not. And it's just a few days. And then you end up. But I like it. I do think that I've been through the pain. So, 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 Purpose center. What? What? We don't have class. We do have. We do. We have do have, we do have our class. All of our classes in December here. Oh, but you for me normally. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say. Anything. Don't say it in the negative. Next week, I will see everyone here next week. Do come here next week. Yeah. Do come. She was on the same <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Even I decide to be a little bit gay for this one. That's what I want. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> here's the, here's the, here. One of the symbols, it will be a little bit of tasteless. Try to find which one. Tasteless? Yes. Tasteless. Well, tasteless for some countries, but it is a symbol for others. Mm -hmm. 
if it's a simple way, another. Is it an Asian American symbol? No. No. Well, let's say that it's an Asian. It is an Asian. It's an it's an Asian symbol that um that um it's an that it it takes place because of some idioms. But it's a good thing. But I but I but I made it a little bit more subtle to the uh, you want you want to exactly think. That's right. Because because. It, 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 um, because originally the swastika was actually a good symbol of sin. That was I know. Yeah, but originally now it's uh, yeah. something else. Yeah, I know. But, but, it, it, but it, I think that is a good thing to, you know, to think of, to try to recover a little no, bit. No, no, I don't think so. Like, no. No, it's not. <laughs> There's no recovery. I mean, there is a recovery, but this sign it means so much to so many. Already. I think it's a little bit obvious. Thank you. 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 You like crayon resist, you could stick them down and paint over them. Yeah. The feeling you're trying to convey? Feeling so completely. <laughs> Yeah. 
They met yesterday. I think I'm Oh, you're doing my sweater. <laughs> yeah, I see it. I love it. <laughs> and I'm not um, referring to it. We need more water. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Kids have the teenagers tonight. They can do my sweater. They can do my sweater. Yeah, we do have to start cleaning, everyone. I'm so sorry. I think we're going to have to skip sharing today. Uh, guys at home, we have to start cleaning up here, so we're really not going to have time for sharing. So sorry. No worries. Have you been enjoying... You can always send me JPEGs, please. I love, love receiving JPEGs. Susan gave me a thumbs up. That's wonderful. E, this is very different for you, E, I think. Were you able to relax and try this new kind of expression? You were right. You were right to you. I got an I was right from Elaine. Where's my tape recorder when I need it? <laughs> You chose the more serene yellow than the hot yellow that I chose. Okay. Well, I hope everyone today found a source of relaxation. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, I hope you learned something today about Agnes Martin and that you have been inspired to learn more about her. I think she was quite an extraordinary woman. Um, she did really earth-shattering, groundbreaking work. Even with the struggles that she had in her life, I think that she created some quite beautiful art. If you get the opportunity to see her, her work in the flesh, as they say, I think that you will be very, very impressed. We have a few more minutes, folks at home. Obviously, you don't have to stop. You're so lucky. Folks here, please do start cleaning. Daniel, I love it. Yeah, 
Yeah, yours are nice and dry. You don't have to worry about the shipping. Yeah. I know, but I mean, you don't have to worry about So I'm not going to go home for another piece of paper. And yeah, very much. Unfortunately, you put it very, it's a better piece of paper, but yeah. it's still yeah. 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 And it's like, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. 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 I will send you all the emails, of course, as always. You've all been getting them, right? Yeah, I used to yell. Just like the first letter. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, folks at home, I am going to say goodbye till next week. Look forward to writing you an email when I can about what we're going to be looking at and who we're going to be talking about. Oh. Hope you enjoyed today's class, and as they say in France, a bientôt. Until next time. A prontito in Spanish.